Hello everyone, this is Rich Hay from the Super Site for Windows. I wanted to do a video for you today to talk about privacy in Windows 10. There's been a lot of discussion going on over the last two months since Windows 10's release about privacy issues, data, and things of that nature that are shared with Microsoft from your Windows 10 systems. Uh, just yesterday, in fact, in response to all of that, Microsoft's uh, Terry Meyerson, the Executive Vice President for the Windows Device Group, went online and did a blog post to talk about privacy and data protection and spelled out the specific situations that Microsoft uses data from your system and also created some more in-depth resources to talk about that data and privacy and how you can control those things. One of the biggest ways you can control the privacy aspect of Windows 10 is through the privacy settings on the system itself. And that's what I have up here on the screen right now. So I just wanted to walk through, as you can see, there are several different areas that you have the ability to control privacy aspects of your operating system. So I'm gonna walk through these and show you uh, the different areas that are covered and how it all connects together. And then I'm gonna point out to you the one setting because Windows 10 does collect a certain amount of data called telemetry. Uh, but it's, there's three levels of data you can share with Microsoft. Now, Terry Meyerson told us yesterday, this is uh, encrypted back to the Microsoft servers. It's anonymous data, so they, they can't tie it to you. And you have three choices to be able to pick how much telemetry data you share with them for the purposes of uh, error reporting and things of that nature, okay? So let's walk through these. The first page here is the general page. And these are some overall privacy options. The first one here, is the advertising ID. You can turn that on and off here. If you do turn it off, it will reset your ID, but that can be used across apps and different experiences in Windows 10. If you don't want that to be used, turn it off. Just toggle the button off like this. The next one is the smart screen filter that is used in Edge and Internet Explorer to check web content URLs that Windows Store apps use. That's a protection feature. That's so because Microsoft has built a database of uh, malicious websites, they are, have the ability to check links that are sent to the browser to make sure you're not accessing something they already know to be uh, uh, of an issue, of a, some type of a malicious malware type issue. So you can turn that on and off. If you want to send Microsoft info about how you write, how you use your uh, stylus, you know, your pen action, you can do that to help improve both typing and writing in the future. Again, something you can turn off. Terry Meyerson said yesterday, they only collect a small amount of data. It's not a key logger. They simply collect a few of your strokes and things of that nature in order to understand how you per, uh, do things so they can better interpret your writing down the future and, and make a better better device overall. And then the other one, last one here, is letting websites to provide locally relevant content by accessing your language list. And that you can turn on and off. Here is a Manage My Microsoft Advertising and other personalization info. If you click on that, it will open up in the browser to this page right here, which is their opt-out page. And right here on top is a big green button. It's on, you simply toggle that and personalized ad settings will be turned off for this browser. And you have an option here to choose to turn on personalized ads wherever you use your Microsoft account. So again, an, it's a level of control that you have to be able to turn these things on and off. And of course, most of these pages relating to privacy settings have a link to the Microsoft privacy statement which you can look at in more detail because they break this down into the different areas. They break it down into services. They talk about what data is shared and how to access and control your personal data. The next thing is location sharing. Again, you can control, this is a master setting right here for location. You can turn on and off. As you see, it will turn off this setting. If you turn it back on, this one's back on. You can turn off for this device only. So this is uh, for the device and then this is location services overall and you can turn those things on and off. If you happen to see this is a familiar button on mobile and you will see it down here in the system tray, this small circle with the dark dot indicates your location is being shared somewhere on the system. So it's an alert. So you, if, you're, if you have sharing turned off, then you want to investigate why that icon is showing up. You can clear the history on your device. Again, another link to the Microsoft resources that show you exactly and talks about Windows 10 location services and privacy, and they explain all the different things here to you. And then you have further control over which apps can use your location. As you see, I have all of them turned off. I choose not to share location with apps. 
This is a control you have and you can choose app by app or you can turn them all on or all off. And then geofencing, I don't have any apps that use geofencing, but geofencing is something that is used with mobile phones more than anything to allow you to identify when you're in a certain location, like when your home turn on Wi-Fi. So this may not be available on a desktop system like I'm on right now, but you would see this on a mobile device and maybe even a tablet or something like that. The next privacy area is for the camera. Again, you can toggle, master toggle on and off to let apps use your camera or not. If you want to see more about privacy camera settings, right here is the frequently asked questions about that available from Microsoft through that link right there. And then again, by individual apps, you can control which can use your camera. Turn them on, turn them off by the toggle. Next is the microphone, very similar to the camera, usually in conjunction because you're using a webcam. So you can master turn that on and off or control it by the individual apps that you might want to let it access. Speech inking and typing is another area uh, that kind of ties together the earlier setting about learning how you write, but this also involves Cortana. So Cortana can do a lot for you as she learns about you, but everything she learns about you, you let her know. You give her permissions to do things such as look at my email and tell me when I have packages coming so you can track them for me or flights or things of that nature. If you do not want Cortana to know anything more about you, you can click this button right here and, and that process will stop and in fact all the data will be cleared on this device of what's known about you. That also means though you can't do things like hey Cortana or dictate text notes or emails or anything like that either. And then if you want to manage this information, you can click on this link right here to go to Bing and you can manage your personal info. You can clear it right here, your interest. You can, your saved places, your search history, all of these things, you have the ability to clear them from this page uh, to cover all devices because the earlier setting I showed you is for this device only. So you can go here to clear it from, from your entire Microsoft account. If you want to learn more about the privacy aspects of these things, you can go to the frequently asked question again about Windows 10 speech, inking, typing, and privacy. Account info. Very similar, you can let Apps access the name and picture and other account info that you have on this device, such as uh, your email address, and then you can control which apps have access to that. Currently, I don't have any that need permission or would use permission, so they're not listed. Contacts, you can choose which apps access your contacts, so you can turn this information on and off by the toggle. Calendar information, again, there are some apps that can access that. It makes sense to let the Melon Calendar app access your calendar info, uh, or you can turn it all off. Again, you can really break this down and turn it off completely if you want. Same thing for messaging. This is for text or MMS. You can turn that on and off here. Radio feature, some devices have radios like Bluetooth. You can control whether or not they share data back and forth, so you have the ability to turn those uh, devices those things on and off plus whether or not apps can control those radios other devices so you can control the syncing of information between this device and other devices we know it doesn't sync everything like our start screen layout or anything like that but some information is shared so that like when you install an app on a new system that you've just created and you're using the same Microsoft account it can share that data sync that data and automatically establish your account on there and it's ready to go if you don't want to do that and you want to enter your credentials on every system you set up you can turn it off right here you can also click on the Choose Apps button and go here to control which apps can sync with what devices. Oh, sorry about that. I went a step too far. Let me get the, uh, let's see, we were on other devices. So I can control that right here. There are trusted devices. So if I, my USB reader on this system is a trusted device, so I have it turned on. You can also uh, control which apps can use that because I have a, again, I have a USB reader that I can plug things in on my desktop to read them, whether they be phones or flash drives or whatever that is. On the feedback and diagnostics page, th this is a twofold piece of data. First off is a control for how often Windows 10 will ask you, hey, how's your experience going? How did you like using the Melon calendar app? How did you like using the Xbox app? You can set it to automatic, which is the recommended setting for Microsoft. And this, again, is uh, data they collect 
in order to evaluate how system usage is going, or you can turn it off or have it once a week, once a day, or, or always asking you for feedback. The second setting is the is the master control for data that micro. You can turn off all these other settings that we've walked through. You can turn off and not send a piece of information to Microsoft or to share it with other apps. But this setting right here is where you get to choose the amount of Windows diagnostic and usage data that is sent to Microsoft from this device. Now I mentioned this earlier. Th there's three levels of sharing. Full, which Microsoft recommends, means they will get anonymous encrypted data to their servers about your usage and experience in Windows, whether you have crashes, whether apps crash, and things of that nature, to be used to, to use that telemetry to improve the experience overall, whether it be through an app and given to an app developer so they understand an app crashed, or given back to the Microsoft developer so that they understand how system the system is working and interacting, and if there are blue screens of death and things of that nature. Then there is the enhanced option, which is a step down from the full, and then basic. Basic means um, you are only going to send the basic data required. Again, it's still encrypted. It's still sent to Microsoft and protected in a secure data center, but you're sending the minimal data necessary for Windows 10 to function properly. So if you want to control all of the data going to Microsoft, this is the place to come set that. Choose one of the three settings and you can have uh, only that amount of data go to them. If you want to learn more about those settings, Microsoft has a page built up to give frequently asked questions about what those frequency options are and how you control it. There's other options here listed about feedback control. You can change it and the information there and what's the different options and just like I described, full includes basic and enhanced, turns on all the advanced diagnostic feature and collects uh, the information from you. Enhanced includes basic and collects information and then basic is just the minimal information required to the operation of Windows. So again, you control that. You have complete control of those that setting right there. Microsoft doesn't change this. Microsoft doesn't mandate this. You choose what you want to do. They default to full. They default to their recommended settings, but you get to control that. And then the last option on here are background apps. If you want certain apps not to run in the background, and this is something if, if you're concerned that this app is talking to Microsoft without your permission, you can turn that on and off here. Um, but again, you're controlling aspects of these apps in all these other areas, controlling the location, the camera usage, microphone, speech, inking, typing, whatever else it is, you have control of that in all these other areas. So you can really come into this privacy settings area and you can completely turn off access to every bit of information to every app there is. Is your experience on Windows 10 going to be different? Yes, it is, because some of those settings are, is exactly what enhances and creates the experience we have on Windows 10. But again, it's within your control. It's in your control to turn these settings on and off and take your privacy to the level you want. The only thing that is, is minimally required is this basic setting right here that the basic amount of information is sent to Microsoft encrypted into their secure data centers for you to be able to use Windows 10. Okay, so it, the reality here is, is that you exercise all the control over your data. And you saw where I went to the Bing pages and I can actually clear the data across for my entire account if I so choose. So you have maximum control of your privacy and your information and how much of that is shared to Microsoft. Now I know some of you don't like the idea that there's still a basic amount of information going out, but we're talking about an advanced operating system. It requires a certain amount of data to be sent to Microsoft so that it can be it can properly perform, get updates and things of that nature. So you got there's got to be some communications between you and Microsoft. So I just wanted to share that with you today. I hope it's helpful and gives you a little bit of insight into the privacy and its controls on Windows 10. Until next time, stay safe. Take care.